system of a down without a doubt the highlight of my weekend whenever they're playing and i'm not just saying that because i'm joined by their drummer john dalmayan how you doing i'm good how are you and i guess that 50 bucks worked out because we got yeah. that on shh don't tell anyone <laughs> You headlined Download in 2005. I mean, what were your first impressions of the festival? That must have been uh, right around the time we released Mesmerize and Hypnotize, right? Yeah. It must have just come out. So for us, Download has always been cold, freezing cold. Mm -hmm. So just getting warmed up enough to play is always a challenge. Well, we, you have to have some whiskey before the show. That's what it makes us do. <laughs> That year, 2005, was pretty amazing for you because you had, you had two albums out in that one year, which went, went both, they both went to number one, which is kind of unheard of. I think it's only the Beatles that have, have done that. I mean, what was going through your heads as a band at that time? You know, it's funny because that stuff never really hit us. Uh, yeah, we didn't really think about it we never focused on it. It was always great. We were proud of the accomplishment, but it wasn't something that we focused on, especially back when we were making music together, making records together. And, uh, you know, we weren't acting like the buffoons that we've turned into in the last 15 years, incapable of working together for some reason. It was very much an us versus the world mindset, you know, so stuff like that just didn't play into it. It was about what we're going to create next, maintaining uh, our musical integrity, and going forward with the best live show possible, you know, which I still think System of a Down has, uh, if not the best, one of the best live shows in rock history. I'll put us up against anybody. I agree with you, to be quite honest with you. I even think that you don't necessarily have to be into your records to enjoy one of your shows. You know, you could take anyone along that's never heard of you before and they would just have like the best time ever, for sure. Well, that's also because of the audience. You know, the audience, First of all, irrespective of the country we play in and the language they speak, they seem to know every lyric to every song, which is something that I can't say. You know, I don't know, I don't know most of our lyrics, but they seem to know every lyric and the energy that they put forth is infectious. So even if you're not necessarily fan, by the way, I experienced the same thing when I was a kid going to concerts, you know, the more into the band, the, the people in the audience that were surrounding me were, even if I didn't know the music, I just felt like a part of it, you know, a part of a greater thing. It's funny you say that because when I was looking back over all the, the, the years that you've played and it's like your audience, they do, they all sing along to the songs and they've just, they've sort of grown over the years as well. Like you're, it's just the crowds have got bigger and bigger, which is insane considering you haven't, like you say, put any mu new music out since 2005. You know, every five years or so, you're kind of playing to a new audience. So every year you're basically cultivating a brand new audience or every five years, even a new generation. And for whatever reason, our music has withstood the test of time and, and these people are handing it down and um, showing the love to the next generation. And they are in turn passing it along to the next one. And as long as we're around, I would imagine that we'll have some kind of an audience for a live show. We always have to maintain that live show that we have and maintain the fire and intensity of it, which is hard to do. You know, we don't play very often. I mean, how do you keep reinventing it then when you haven't, like, like you say, you haven't got any new songs to, to do that with? Well, well, some of it is Shavo. Shavo's doing our bass player. Yeah. He does a lot of the technical uh, production element stuff and he'll come up with um, new lighting. You'd be surprised at how effective that is mm -hmm. as far as your live show. Um, other than that, you know, we don't play very often. So when we do play, there is that enthusiasm from us of, oh, hey, we're doing it again and we're playing in front of live people. And it's more of a thrill. Whereas had we done, you know, like 200 shows a year for the last 10 years, I don't think that we would have had that as much, you know. And because of that, you'll get a different level of intensity and energy coming out on stage. Yeah, because you're enjoying it as well. Yeah, it's also like a treat for us to be able to do it, you know, even though it's our choice to do it. We could do it as much as we want, theoretically speaking. Um, but there are, there are elements in the band that govern how many shows we play. You know, we won't get into that too much, but uh, I feel very blessed for every show that we have, and I treat every show that we have as our last one, because you never know what happens. So is there never a conversation when you come off the back of one of those tours and you're all on a high that you're like, 
should we just do one song? Just let's just just put one song out there. I know you know the likelihood of an album is probably unlikely, but even even a well, I don't I don't see why it, it would be so simple for us to go in and make an album that we have the music. We just can't get out of our own way on that one. You know, I, I truly believe that if we went into the studio even to record one song, it wouldn't end with one song and it would break the ice. But you know, there's egos involved and and uh, quite frankly wisdom isn't always something you achieve in older age sometimes you achieve stubbornness and uh, and we just can't get out of out of our own way on that one but i would like to say that it is a band issue i know that certain members of my band have been blamed in the past but at the end of the day it takes four people to make the music we make and it takes four people not to make it so i want the fans to know that as much as i personally want it to happen or have wanted it to happen in the past there are things that are not in anybody's control and um, no one member of System of a Down is greater than the other, especially when it, in regards to making an album. So unless the four of us get on the same page at the exact same time and the stars align, I think it's very unlikely that we'll make new music, which is a sadness because I think we have a lot to offer still. Yeah, it's a great shame. And it's a shame that we're going to miss you this year at Download as well. You must be gutted that you're not able to uh, play again. Yeah, I, w I would have actually played two shows this last weekend in Los Angeles, but obviously those didn't happen. These things, uh, these things don't happen very often. It's never happened in our career. You know, in, in fact, it's never happened in our lifetime, anything like this. <laughs> so what have you been doing during lockdown? I've <laughs> I could show you. Yeah. There's a massive uh, kids play set that I built outside. Here, Let's have a look. Do we have a look? Oh, bless. Oh my yeah. God. Did you make that? Well, I didn't, I didn't design, I'm not the architect for it, but I built it. John, that's incredible. Yeah, it took about, the instruction said it would take, you know, like uh, 30 hours or so, yeah. but it took me two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> two weeks, okay. Well. In all fairness, I was doing it by myself, you know, um, so, it takes a little bit longer when you're doing something like that by yourself. There was that. Just spending time with the family. I might go in and record some more covers or something. I, I enjoy doing stuff like that. So, you know, just trying to stay productive and, and trying to have as many artistic endeavors as possible. Because at the end of the day, that's, that's what keeps me happy. You talk about the covers. We, that album that you had out with These Grey Men is brilliant. Um, that, the Radiohead cover was incredible with M Shadows and um, Tom Murillo. Are you, are, you, are you a big Radiohead fan? Is that where that came from? I am a tremendous Radiohead fan up to Kid A. They lost me after that, but I thought they were one of the best bands, uh, especially, you know, during the 90s. I mean, yeah. They were just phenomenal and different and like creative and really morose, which I love listening to morose music, you know, because I'm a, such a happy, upbeat guy. It's nice to delve into morose kind of sad music. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Always like that song, but I always also kind of, I don't know, I wish the drums came in a little bit differently. And, you know, one of the pitfalls of being a musician is I listen to everything now as if uh, it was being presented to me to create drums on it. And then how would we change it a little bit as far yeah. as, you know, the way it was laid out. So it's a blessing and a curse in that I can do that. But hey, the positive is if, if I really feel strongly about something, I can go kind of recreate it in my own image and have a good time with it. Well, I, I definitely think that your, your version of it is actually better than the original. I'm not just saying that because you're here, but it is. I mean, the, the bit Again, the 50s in the mail for that one too. All right. I'm earning a lot of money on this interview. It's great. Um, so, yeah, no, I, it's the, I mean, the whole thing, but like just at the end when Tom comes in and it's just like, God, this, it just sort of really grow the track actually grows it ends on yeah the a lot of there's also a lot of uh, string instrumentation yeah that we put in and um right before the solo at the end tom morello solo there's a beautiful string part that my uh, good friend danny shamoon played he was also in uh, scars on broadway with me when i was still in scars on broadway okay and um, he did a fantastic job on it it's actually my favorite part of the whole album I mean, that track is definitely my favorite track on the album, for sure. No, it's I'm good. glad you enjoyed it. I would like you to do some more. You should definitely give it a pop, for sure. Well, I'm thinking about doing uh, a couple of, believe it or not, a couple of rap songs. Really? Just to kind of, yeah, just to 
dress it up a little bit. And there's a there's a really good song by The Weeknd that I want to cover. You'll recognize it when you hear it if you like The Weeknd. And this is one of his better songs. And uh, and I also want to cover uh, Helter Skelter by The Beatles. Keep okay. mentioning The Beatles. So Might how, as well do that. how would you do Helter Skelter then? A lot faster. Okay. And who, <laughs> who, would, who would feature on it? Have you got anyone in mind? My good friend Frankie Perez is who I want to have sing on it. Yeah. Um, I might bring in, I might bring in kind of like a, a, a weird guitar solo into it. So I'll have to think about who I can invite in to do that. would like to do another song with M Shadows just because he's so phenomenal. Oh, he's he's such a good guy to work with. Yeah, his voice is incredible, isn't it? So have you been practicing? Do you, like, are you playing all the time or when you're off the road? Or what, what do you do to keep your chops up? Not much. <laughs> I rarely play. I only play when I feel like it. Okay. Doesn't that affect your playing? Yeah, it makes it very bad. But what I do is when we, when we know we're going to start touring, I ramp up like two months in advance. I'll start playing a lot. So I'll go from, I may not play drums for two or three months, but when we're playing, I'll play, you know, the way I did when I was 15 or 16 years old, two, three hours a day warm up get ready you know and it's all muscle memory at this point anyway for me you know and it's not like i'm playing anything i can't handle playing live quite frankly if i tour for two weeks it's as if i never stopped you know that's you want to catch system right around a two-week period that's when everything is just incredibly on fire for us yeah. not that we're not good in the beginning but we get better as we go and then at the end we kind of like uh we get started to get tired so in the middle, that's the sweet spot. So what is it about download that kind of makes you come back? Because like you say, you don't tour that much, but it seems like when you are touring, the place that you always go to is download. Yeah, we really like to play in freezing cold elements whenever yeah. possible. And download seems to be the coldest for England, you know? We've played other festivals, but they haven't been as cold. So we always come back to download. Have you got any memories of, of playing download? Well, aside from the cold weather. Yeah. The fans are fantastic in England. You know, from the first time we played at the Astoria in London to the last time we played there a couple of years back, they've always been as fanatical as possible, always welcoming. No matter how cold the weather is, you could feel the warmth from them. Um, you could literally see it sometimes, the steam rising out of the audience. Yeah. And just very kind, uh, sweet people. I'm a big fan of England in general, uh, of history, English history and, and lore, always have been. So England is one of my favorite places to go and play, especially when you get out of London, which I don't enjoy as much, and you see the countryside and the beauty of it. And again, the people are just such sweet, kind, welcoming people. And they always have been for system. And for, and for that, we have uh, a lot of gratitude.